Hello friends and welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me in another video. So today's video, I thought let's try something a little more lighthearted, a little more fun, something that I've actually thought about in the past, having been driving in Germany and driving here in the United States. And no, it has nothing to do with the Autobahn. That's so overdone. Still might do a video on that the next time we're in Germany, but that is not the topic of today's video. We all know that every country has trucks, and I'm talking large trucks, a 53-foot trailer, the semi-trucks if you're here in the United States, uh, lorries, I guess if you're in England, I'm, did I say that right? Am I making the right comparison here? Um, the big trucks, the big hauling trucks that go city to city, state to state, around the country. Now, if you've been in both Germany or Europe and in the United States, you may have noticed that they're different. Here in the United States, we have these massive sleeper cabs. Um, there's a picture of one here. Uh, the long nose Peterbilt uh, trucks that are just these massive things. You get some that are real fancy looking. You get some that are not so fancy looking that are just your normal everyday truck. And we also have some that are flat nosed like these here. But in Europe, you never saw, I never saw, a truck with a long nose. They're all flat nose trucks. Uh, they may have sleepers. I'm not quite sure. I don't know if I saw one with a sleeper or if I just didn't notice. Uh, but today's video talks about why these two countries or these two areas of the world have such different trucks. So again, a little more lighthearted from my usual reaction video. I thought it would be kind of fun. So let's just dive into the video and check out why these two trucks are so different. Why European and American trucks are so different. American and European semi-trucks are very different. In America, you see all the trucks with a long nose and wheelbase with the cabin behind the engine, whereas trucks in Europe are cab-over trucks where the cabin is above the engine. But why are they so different and what are the advantages and disadvantages? Let's take a look at it. Livable One of the reasons why the American trucks have bigger cabs is that owner-operators are very common in the US and not so much in Europe. These people own their trucks and pretty much live in them for months at a time. Because they spend so much time, and some have to live in the cabin, these cabins are quite a bit larger and have more features in the cabin, such as a fridge, microwave, freezer, wardrobe, large bed, windows, and some even have their own toilet. Owners modify their trucks to include huge living compartments, something not so common in Europe. It is, of course, also possible to spend several days in a truck with a cab over, but the comfort is just not nearly as high. Long, wide road. Well, that makes perfect sense. I didn't even think of it like that, whereas here in the United States, a lot of these truck uh, truckers are owner-operators. They own that truck. That is their truck. They aren't leasing it from a company. So that is their home on the road for months at a time, away from home. So they need that luxury, that extra space to be able to live in there. Uh, not all truckers are owner operators. A lot of them do lease their trucks from the company that they work for. Uh, but a lot of those are also sleepers. Uh, so because you're, you're going cross country, and obviously the United States is huge compared to countries in Europe. So from west coast to east coast is a few thousand miles. And if you're doing over the road trucking, OTR, um, then you will need somewhere to stay. And I'm 
I guess it's just more cost effective to be able to sleep in your vehicle than to get hotels all along that route, right? Makes sense. So, and I'm curious to know why maybe it's not needed. Maybe they aren't going so far. I don't know the logistics behind trucking in Europe, uh, but maybe it's just not so common to have trucks going such long distances where they would need um, multiple weeks, if not months, in their truck. So, interesting point. Much of an American truck's life is spent on the interstate system, where the lanes are wide and the roads are straight. For that reason, the long wheelbase of the truck is acceptable and typically makes the ride much more comfortable. Considering they are allowed to drive up to 12 hours every 24 hours, whereas European truckers can only drive 9 hours, that extra comfort is important. European semi-trucks are lighter and have shorter wheelbases, which makes them significantly easier to maneuver. Essentially, they are more compact and easier to work with in traffic and urban environments, which is perfect for the narrow roads in Europe. Also, the cab over has a better overview and less blind spots which increase safety noticeably, where the larger bonnets and A-pillars on the American trucks make it difficult for drivers to get a clear view of traffic. Strict regulations. Why haven't I thought of any of these reasons why these trucks are so different? That makes perfect sense. The roads here in the United States are huge compared to those roads in Europe, even the Autobahn in Germany. Uh, long, straight roads, the corners aren't so tight. Um, they do go into towns in that uh, here as well. They aren't strictly just interstate trucks. Uh, we have a, a number of warehouses here in the Phoenix Valley uh, that trucks need to get to and from, uh, and it's off the interstate quite a way, so they are making tight turns, and I've seen more than once a truck have to take an extremely wide turn to make the corner, and then if there's traffic stopped, uh, I know that me personally, if I see a truck coming and they're making, let's say they're coming from my right and they're making a left turn, so they're going to be crossing in front of me, I will stop well short of that stop sign just to give them room to make that corner because otherwise there, there's no way. There is absolutely zero chance that they are going to make that turn based on their wheelbase. And now thinking about it and seeing this, makes perfect sense why European trucks have a much shorter wheelbase because the roads are much smaller, narrower, uh, the corners might be tight. So a truck that's able to just make that corner, granted, they're gonna have to take a wide turn still just by the physics of pulling a trailer, but it's not gonna be nearly as wide as a truck here in the United States is gonna have to make. And I also didn't think about the safety behind it uh, in regards to visibility. And the trucks here, there's a lot of blind spots, obviously. They're, they're this massive machine on the road, and then they have that long nose. A lot of them have uh, like little flags or poles uh, on the bumpers that extend up so the driver can actually see where their, the edge of their bumper is. Uh, so they can gauge how close they are to things. And if they didn't have that, unless you are a very experienced truck driver, you may get a bit too close to somebody or to that curb or that wall making a turn that you could hit it with your front bumper. So I didn't think about that either. I mean, this is, all of this makes perfect sense. A little... Uh, personal opinion, I do like the looks of the big, long-nosed trucks over the flat-nosed overcab trucks. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I grew up here and I saw a lot more of those. Uh, but it just, aesthetically, it's more pleasing to me. I don't know why. It's kind of silly, but there you have it. Strict regulations. Stricter regulations in Europe make for different trucks. 
For starters, a European semi-truck can only be 18.75 meters or about 61 feet. Some countries have some exceptions, but generally that is the rule. Because of these restrictions, European trucks have to be as short as possible so they can tow more cargo. Considering American cabs can be 20 feet long, that only leaves 40 feet of room for cargo. So, U.S. truck with EU rules, 61 feet total length in Europe. Whereas here in the United States, you have a 50 foot, 53 foot trailer. And then it says, you know, the, the cab in that previous graphic, there's no limit on how long that can be. So you could have, I mean, 60, 61 feet, you would have a lot more than that if you had a 53 foot trailer plus a, you know, a, a 10 foot, uh, 15 foot, whatever, I guess, cab. That's quite a bit longer than a European truck. So, um, I didn't know that the, the regulation, I mean, it makes sense to have a, a limit on your length just because of, you know, getting around in traffic and making those turns. In order to make more room for cargo, the cab has to be as short as possible. Makes sense. Similar requirements in the U.S. have been revoked back in 1986, and trucks now can be much longer. Actually, back in the day, cab over trucks were quite popular in the U.S., but without strict limitations, roomier and more convenient to live with conventional design trucks prevailed. Speed and aerodynamics. A big difference between the European semi-trucks and American ones is that in Europe, the speed is limited to 90 km per hour. But in some places in the U.S., trucks are allowed to reach 129 and even 137 km per hour. It is on the long straight roads. At high speed, the better aerodynamics and longer wheelbase is a clear advantage for the long-nosed trucks, which are created for the long trips. Conclusion. Okay, so 85 miles an hour in a 60, let's just say 65 foot multi-ton vehicle is absurd. <laughs> I've, I've mentioned it before talking to people. I don't know if I've mentioned it in any of my videos, but I will now that I think we need to adopt the traffic rules of Europe for trucks here in the United States. They should not be allowed to drive in any lane they want to. They should stick to the rightmost lanes permanently. And I'm sorry, I don't care if the guy in front of you is going two miles an hour slower than you want to go. You're, you're stuck behind him. There, too many times on two lane highways, right out here outside of Buckeye, on Interstate 10, uh, it's two lanes. They are adding a third lane, but right now it's two lanes. You get these trucks side by side. The speed limit right there is 75 miles an hour. Neither one of them are doing 75. The one in the left lane isn't going any faster than the one in the right lane. Sometimes the one in the right lane is still creeping up and then it'll slow down and that'll creep up. You, this causes such a traffic problem behind them. And that is because people here are so impatient that they want, they're, they're right on your bumper all the time. And I'm not saying that's the right thing to do. But if the trucks were regulated to that rightmost lane, that would leave that left lane open to faster traffic. It would open up the roadways. I'm not blaming truckers alone for traffic issues, but a lot of times it is their fault. I've literally seen the beginning of a traffic jam going down the road. I'm going this direction and I see two trucks side by side going the opposite direction and behind them is three miles of cars bumper to bumper because these two trucks want to have a drag race at 73 miles an hour and neither one of them gaining on the other one. So if they were regulated to drive in specific lanes, it would open up the roadways so much more. I've seen these trucks in the leftmost lanes on four, five, six lane highways here. They're in the middle lane, they're in the left lane. I've even seen them in the HOV lane. 
And for those of you who are not from the United States, we have a, the far left lane is called the HOV lane. It's, it's um, reserved for uh, those electric vehicles, uh, lower emission vehicles, so mo motorcycles can, can drive in that lane. During certain hours of the day, you are not allowed in that lane unless there are two or more people in the car. So it's more of a carpooling lane to cut down on emissions and traffic. However, outside of those hours, anybody can be in that left lane. I've seen these guys in that left lane. There is absolutely no reason for it, minus the fact that they don't want to get stuck in traffic over here from people entering the interstate uh, using the on-ramps or people trying to merge to the off-ramp. I get it. I understand that it's a pain in the butt to always adjust your speed, trying to let cars in and out, but you're in a multi-ton, 60-plus foot vehicle. You do not need to be in any other lane. I don't care who you are. I have family that drive trucks, and I'm sorry you fall into this as well. You guys are a menace on the road. Um, you just need to stay to the stay to the right, period. End of discussion. That's where I'll leave it. So in Europe, I know that they have, especially in Germany, they have the truck lanes in the rightmost lane, and their speed is regulated slower than everybody else. That is genius. That makes so much more sense. Granted, they are allowed to pass each other, but they are required to get right back into that lane, get out of the way. Um, you're, you're a danger on the road because you're not going to stop. If you need to stop suddenly, it's game over at that point. So just slow down, stay to the right, and everybody's happy. Trips. Conclusion. So the reason why there is such a big difference between trucks in Europe compared to America is that they are used in different ways. There are different rules that must be observed, both in terms of speed, driving time, lengths, weight, etc. And that there is a big difference between roads and the infrastructure. So, one is not necessarily better than the other, but they are adapted to the needs of truck owners, the driver, and the government requirements. Which is your favorite? Thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe for much more. All right, so that was a little lighthearted, you know, a little more fun than my typical video. And I did learn quite a bit. You know, those are things that I never thought of, although I'd never just sat down and thought about why are trucks different here in the United States than they are in Europe? But it makes perfect sense. They're used for different reasons. There's different regulations put in place. Uh, the roadways are different. Um, you know, the laws are different. And neither one of them is better than the other. I mean, you can't compare these as this one's better than that one. Um, that's like comparing Ronaldo to Messi. You cannot compare the two because they are different in their own right. They have their, their um, strengths in, in certain areas and their, their negative points in other areas. But I, I still believe that they are dangerous on the road, no matter where you are here in the United States, in Europe, wherever. And, uh, but the differences here that they pointed out um, make sense. You know, the aerodynamics of the trucks here in the US, they need to have aerodynamics because they can go 85 miles an hour. And it's just ridiculous, it's scary sometimes with these trucks. And even in the snow, they do not slow down. They will be blown by you. Um, in a foot of snow, just throwing that up on the cars beside them. Um, whereas in Europe, flat nose, over the cab, however you want to call it, uh, they are regulated by speed, a much lower speed. Um, the, the roadways are smaller, so I wonder if they're narrower. They didn't go over the, the width of the trucks, but I am assuming that they might be uh, a bit narrower as well. Uh, but the length, I mean, it makes sense. If you're, if you're restricted to 61 feet total length, nose to, to back, then the cab needs to be as small as possible while still maintaining all its functionality so that you can maximize the cargo space. Makes perfect sense. Here in the United States, 
50 foot, 53 foot trailer. And then you can put a 15 foot cab on the front, a big sleeper, big long nose truck. Um, you know, you're pushing 70 feet, you know. Uh, so those things are huge. And I also noticed, and it didn't cover it in here, but a lot, the majority, I would say, um, if not all, I don't remember ever seeing one that didn't, but the trailers in Germany are soft sided. They aren't full metal encased trailers. They have a fabric of some sort on the sides because it's always flapping in the wind as they're driving down the road. I wonder if that has a purpose. Um, Maybe it's easier to load and unload if you could just open up the entire side of the trailer. You're not going through the back only and trying to get to the front. Um, you know, I'm, that makes sense to me. You know, uh, I know moving trucks are like that where they can just unroll the side of the trailer and then all of your belongings are right there and they aren't um, trying to get through the back all the way to the front. So if you, if you know... Uh, Another answer, if that, that's the answer, if there's another reason why trucks in Germany have soft sides, not the full metal container, uh, drop a line in the comments down below. I will also leave a link to the original video if you'd like to watch it without the interruptions. Uh, but I really want to thank you so much for joining me today, for watching this cool video, and until next time, I'll catch you later. Bye.